Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quick and easy factorial equation. For those of you who are not familiar with factorial, n factorial is defined as the product of numbers n through 1. So you kind of multiply n consecutive integers, including 1 and n, and that product is defined as n factorial. So 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1, and that will be 6. 1 factorial is 1. 0 factorial is 1 by definition. There's also a gamma function definition, which includes the factorials of real numbers. Okay, so that's what the factorial is, and we're going to solve this equation for x. There's a couple of things you can do. One way to do it is, um, I think, making a common denominator. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. Our first method is going to be making a common denominator. Let's rewrite the original problem. 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial equals x over 8 factorial. Now, remember, uh, factorials contain the smaller factorials. For example, 7 factorial is 7 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, but this part is already 6 factorial, so we can basically write 7 factorial as 7 times 6 factorial. In general, n factorial can always be written as n times n minus 1 factorial, and if you replace n with 1, you actually get 0 factorial from here, which is kind of interesting. So that's the only case where two integer factorials are the same, even though the numbers themselves are different. There is, I, I believe there was a problem like x factorial equals x plus 1 factorial. The solution is 0. All right, there's only one solution. And are there any other solutions in the real world? You can check, uh, take a look at the graph of uh, x factorial, which uh, can be done by Desmos. Anyways, so we have these properties of factorials. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. Knowing that uh, 7 factorial is 7 times 6 factorial helps us make a common denominator on the left-hand side because we just need to multiply by 7. So let's go ahead and do it. Multiply by 7 and multiply by 7. We get 7 over 7 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial equals x over 8 factorial. And if you add the numerators, 8 over 7 factorial equals x over 8 factorial. I think at this point, you can go ahead and cross multiply. Let's do it. 8 times 8 factorial equals x times 7 factorial. Now, I want to simplify this further, obviously. Come on. I mean, 7 factorial is easy. It's kind of, I think it's 5,040, right? As far as I remember. But 8 factorial is going to be 8 times that. So it's going to be 40,000 something. But who is going to calculate that? And on top of that, you have to multiply by 8. So let's simplify this. Uh, 8 factorial contains 7 factorial. So I can write it as 8 times 7 factorial. And since 7 factorial is not 0, I can just go ahead and divide both sides by that. And obviously, that's going to help us a lot, leaving us with x equals 8 times 8. And what is that equal to? I think it's 64. Yay! We got the answer. Easy peasy lemon cheesy. So this is the first method. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach, which is the second method. All right. So what is our original problem? 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial equals x over 8 factorial. Actually, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just slightly different. But I kind of like the second method because it simplifies quickly, sort of. Like you get rid of fractions um, right away. So since 8 factorial contains a 6 and 7 factorial, I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply both sides by that. And that's actually good because it is going to simplify and we're going to end up with x. So whatever is on the left-hand side, that's the answer. So don't worry about the x. Let's just simplify this. And that gives us 8 factorial over 6 factorial plus 8 factorial over 7 factorial. I just distributed, right? What can I do next? Well, I can just expand 8 factorial because it contains 6 factorial as well as 7 factorial. But for 6 factorial, you have to take two steps. So 8 factorial can be written as 8 times 7 factorial and 7 factorial can be written as 7 times 6 factorial. So it can be basically stop at any point. Make sense? Wherever you want, whenever you want, you can stop. And I forgot to expand the second uh, one. So it's going to be 8 factorial. Ah, 
I keep writing 8 factorial. It's going to be 8 times 7 factorial and divided by 7 factorial. Cool. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. 6 factorial cancels out, 7 factorial cancels out, and yay, this is another method. You know why? Because in the first one, we found 8 times 8. This is 8 times 7 plus 8, which is 56 plus 8. Totally different method, right? And that is going to be 64, and that would be the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.